All right, so my name is Jason Kirkshank. I am the former principal uh, and teacher at Eaton Earl Smith School in Victoria. Uh, and my guest today is Alyssa Rorich. And uh, uh, I met Alyssa in, uh, I gotta get my dates right, don't I? I met Alyssa in 2013. Question mark? I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah I think it was 2013, yeah. I think so too. Um, and you had, I'll let you tell your story, but this is how I met you. So um, I met you, you had been uh, doing some uh, undergrad studies at UVic um, and uh, you had come to UVic from New Jersey where you had grown up and, uh, and you had struggled to some degree in your learning, but you, um, you, but your struggle, I think you internalized and you didn't necessarily know that not everyone struggled that way, although you may have to some degree. And, um, and during university, I think that you found it harder and harder and harder to cope the way that you had been coping, uh, which was probably uh, extra time. Uh, and, and, and then uh, having, having less time uh, for personal and social engagements. And so all of your time was focused on academics. Um, and as I'm sure I'll hear you say in a little bit that um, it didn't necessarily affect your grades, that more work didn't always mean better marks. Maybe sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so what I thought we'd do is just take a couple of minutes, uh, Alyssa, to um, maybe go back in your mind to when we first met and how we first met. Um, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about your program and what's happened since then. Um, but if you just, yeah, I just want to start to, I think it was, uh, I'm going to have to look it up, but I think it was 20, because you finished in 2016 and you did a two-year program. Mm -hmm. So I think we met in 2014. Yeah, I think it was the, the first time I had a meeting with you was the spring of 2014. And then I had started that September of 2014, the full-time program with Ian Aerosmith. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I grew up in New Jersey, my lovely home with my two brothers and family. And um, my journey with school, I would not say was smooth by any means. I really, my parents, like I remember getting tested, like I did not thrive in school. I didn't like it when I was young. I think my confidence was really low. So my parents had me tested at a young age to see like if I did have learning disabilities and I kind of got, you know, swept under the rug a little bit because I did get tested, but I would just pass enough that I wouldn't be classified as someone who needed to be in a look with an extra support class or that extra yeah. help into a different, like I would, I was not classified as someone has a learning disability. I just needed a little more help and a little more time. And I was developing a little slower than other children. So I did get a little bit of help through like second and third grade to help my math and reading. Um, but, and then as I got older, it just kind of manifested as, and like, I just spent a lot of time. Um, I never really liked school. I spent so many hours working, like in high school, I would spend easily like four to five hours at night doing homework um, every night after school. And th the biggest thing I really struggled with is I would put so much time and effort in and get very minimal, like, grades back in the respect of I I guess I'd say I was a perfectionist or a high, a high achiever and I wanted to get really good grades I wanted all A's and I put I would work with others I would use every resource that I had go to teachers take the best notes that I could like do all the extra work and like every teacher knew me because I always went and like spoke with them out of class or any any extra help that I could but I would still I mean I would get this is the thing. It's like, I got good grades. Like I got B's and like, I know I never got a C in my life. And I think I got some A's, but like my grades were never low enough for teachers or my parents to be like, okay, something is really up here. Cause mm -hmm. I just put so much time and work into it. Um, that did manifest itself into a lot of anxiety. Cause I really struggled with putting so much time in and then taking an exam or and then a test and then getting it back and not doing well and that was so frustrating 
and so devastating. And this happened to me for years. Like I remember the first time it happening was spelling when I was in grade three and like studying so hard for these spelling mm -hmm. tests and then like bombing them literally each and every time or like passing. I decided to come to UVic. It was just high school. I had a really rough high school experience. College is going to be different. Came to university. It was no different. And anything, it kind of got worse because there's just higher course material and like more load. And I couldn't keep, I just like couldn't keep up with it in the way as in depth and as good as I wanted to end what I knew I needed to do for an exam to write well. Mm -hmm. And I put a lot of time in and I, I made it through my first year, but with like pretty much, I think it was like all B's. I think I may have like failed one class, but <laughs> my anxiety was so bad. Like I had hit my all time low mm -hmm. where I knew after my first year, I didn't know what degree to get. Also, that was a huge other area in my life where I was, everyone was like, do what you're really good at. Or like, what are you really good at at school? And I was like, I'm not good at anything. I've never excelled in anything. I'm, I just put in a lot of work and the amount of work that I put in kind of reflects the grade that I get back and the mediocre grade I get back. Like there's nothing I like anatomy, but I'm not good at it or I don't get great grades at it. So that came through. And then I had a really great mentor. She was like, you need to get tested for learning disabilities. And I was like, okay, totally open to it. Got tested, found, I definitely had some uh, learning disabilities and a strong case of ADHD. When I found that out, I wasn't surprised because I knew I was definitely an oddball and I was struggling so much. So it kind of gave me a sense of peace that, okay, I'm different because I didn't know any different. Like I just, I knew I was different because I had to put a lot of work in, but I didn't know that I had ADHD or like my brain worked that drastically different than like the, the bell curve, like people who are quote unquote normal. So I went back into my second year, just knowing I had learning disabilities and ADD and the university was great and went through that whole, my whole pro, like portfolio with me, it gave me extra time, this computer system where I can write all my exams online, the, my exams would be read out to me. I would get to work with a learning strategist and none of that work, like it did not change a literal thing within my grades. I remember writing an exam and I did everything to the book the learning strategist just told me which honestly she didn't really help because I was already doing the things that she had told me to do and that's how I got through high school but I wrote an exam I barely passed and I said I did everything to the book I read every textbook done everything I exam did and this is what happened to me and the one thing she told me she goes I don't know what to tell you anymore except just keep trying and at that point I knew that like I can't get through university like this. My anxiety was way too high. I was so depleted with school. Like this is years of working really hard and not getting any like great marks that like barely passing. Like this is years of constant defeat. And then when she, I had found out I had learning disabilities and with this extra time and this extra support and I still was struggling like this. I was like, I did it. I did, really did not know what to do with myself or what to do. And I really wanted to get my education. So I went to a learning specialist in Vancouver and she gave me my three paths of what she thought I could do. And one of them was Eaton Aerosmith. I had never heard about it. And then she just really suggested like I, that is if I really want to change my life or help get better and not go through university with a crutch, AKA taking less courses, taking way longer to get your degree and kind of battling through it, this Eaton Aerosmith is your way to get, like finish your degree. And I won't lie. I was like, not happy with the response. I, I had no idea what it was, but to me at the time I was 20, 21 at this point, And I was like, I don't, I was 21. I was like, I don't want to take two years off university. Like, what is this thing? I, I was really overwhelmed, but at the same time, I knew it was the right thing. So I, that's when I contacted you and I had that meeting the first time. And I think I sent my like disability or my, I don't know what I'm going to call it, uh, report sent over to you, my psych assessment done. And uh, you were like, you're a great fit for this program. So that's when I 
came in and in my head, I thought I was only going to be there for a year and I was there for two years, but all in all, I think it was definitely a great choice. And that's how I came into E. Narrowsmith, came in scraping with <laughs> very desperate. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember that. I remember you, you, um, you explaining that to me and, and certainly seeing that on your, on your psych report. Um, but also just you as a human being and, and, and looking at your and hearing your pain for what you wanted to do and knowing what Aerosmith program uh, could do if, if you let it. And so you did spend two years and you worked really hard and you put your academic life on hold. You continued to row um, with the Evic rowing team, if I remember correctly. So you were up at the crack of dawn uh, rowing and then you come to school for three hours uh, a day um, and, uh, and work really hard on, on cognitive strengthening exercises. And, um, and, and you worked uh, for two years. Um, and then you finished your Aerosmith program. And then you transitioned out of Aerosmith and, and back to UVic at that time. And if I remember correctly, you were deciding whether or not to immerse yourself back into full-time studies or if you were gonna do part-time. Um, what did you end up doing? Yeah, so after, yeah, I did row my whole time through, so I'd get up, and I was actually rowing with Vic City because I wasn't allowed to row with the bikes, but mm. um, I did my first two years, and then I went full-time back to UVic. I wasn't sure, like, a lot of, like, the advisors were like, take part-time, but I, I really wanted to get my degree down. Like, I was, my patience with school was wearing thin, each time, even though I was in Eaton Aerosmith school, I was still like, in, I still kind of looked at it as school and I just wanted to be done. So I signed up for like full load of courses and I went to all of them and I like, was like, I can do this. So I, I took a full, my first semester back, I only took four classes. And then each semester after that, I took five and or six to finish my degree um, two years after. Let me just jump in to say that you worked on some core areas with Aerosmith and your own brain. And so the areas that you were working on uh, had to do with executive functioning, uh, which would help with your, um, with your ADHD, um, yeah, with, uh, with, with main idea, with concepts, with reasoning, uh, relationships forming. So executive functioning, memory for information and instructions, all things that are uh, really, really important when you are, um, at university when you're studying, when you're at lectures and um, trying to discern what it is that the professor is saying and what you need to take away that's important. And then when you go home and review that material to be able to synthesize it and to see what's important because you can't remember everything that professor says and you can't read every single word that they throw at you. So I just wanted to, to throw that in to, to just share what areas of the brain that you were actually strengthening while you were with us at Aerosmith. Yeah, and I think um, my my school, I kind of look at it as like post pre Aerosmith and post Aerosmith because it was night and day. Like you look at my transcripts, excuse me, and it's like struggling, and there's a definite downfall, mm -hmm. like downfall until I went to eat Aerosmith and I came back. It's literally night. I got like all A's and like B's. Mm -hmm. Um, when I came back and when I got B's, I knew it was because I was taking a lot of courses and I like, like I was okay with them. Like I knew when I got a B, I deserved it. Like I looked at it, I'm like, yeah, I got a B plus. Cause like, that's kind of where I was at with that course and I'm fine with it. But so it was, I was a completely different student when I came back after Eaton Aerosmith. Um, and I think there was a multiple different things that I really noticed in myself as a student after, but one of the big, big things that I found myself as a student is one, my memory was significantly better. Like in not just school, but my personal life, my friends always come to me like, Alyssa remembers everything. Like, when did we do that hike? And like, I will tell you, but also and it comes with the school. I used to look at a textbook and an exam before Ian Aerosmith and be like, I know where the section is. I can tell you the page and I can tell you the pictures that are on the page, but I can't tell you the information. I can't tell you the words that I need to answer for this exam where 
that didn't happen nearly like no either I knew it or I didn't but I also really found that I could sit and listen to exams and my attention was better um but or sorry not exams but lectures but I could go through my course and be like, this is what's important and what's not. Like I, we, I would study with groups and with other students and they're like, well, what about this? I'm like, no, they like, that's not important. She didn't go over that in the class. Like I had a way better instinct and just understanding of what was expected of me as a student. Whereas before I just thought I needed to do everything. I needed to know li literally everything under the sun. And that's the way you're going to be your best student, but that's not how it works. You're not like, you can't read, you can't be perfect in that way. But I found how to take great notes in my way and what works for me and note taking, because uh, that's something I really struggled with before. Um, I knew what strengths I had and how I worked. So I knew what really worked for me and I, it was way easier for me to get better marks because I'm like, okay, hey, I don't understand this. This is a little very large concept. So I need to go like in the textbook and read just that section. I don't need to read the whole chapter <laughs> or like maybe I do. It depends on the course, but I could understand that and section that out and work through that, if that makes sense. I don't know if I was clear on that, but my understanding of what I think what I'm trying to say is my understanding of what was expected of me as a student was so much better after Ian Aerosmith. Like I could very clearly pick out what was expected of me and what I needed to do to get there. But also, if I didn't do something right, I knew it wasn't me personally. It wasn't that I wasn't smart enough or I wasn't a good mm -hmm. enough student. It's because I missed the mark on something. And I would go to that professor and be like, I know this, this is where I'm coming from. How did I get this mark off? Or like, why didn't I get this? And then I understand. Like I did, when I really struggled in school, if I didn't get something right or I got a bad mark, I immediately thought it's because I didn't work hard enough right. or I wasn't smart enough and it was my fault. Wow. But I, yeah, after eating Aerosmith, I was like, no, I did my work. I understand this. And I had a way clearer picture of what like, it wasn't a personal thing and it's like not everyone's meant to get a hundreds you're not always going to get hundreds or like a's but work towards that type of thing yeah. so you went on to graduate with your bachelor's degree yes and I, then what um, uh, recreation and health education yep. and i did i actually which i find very surprising is that the five-year program and I did that whole, even though I took two years off for Ian Aerosmith, I did that whole program in five years in one extra semester. So I was like, even, yeah, that is actually all because I, I, when I came back from Ian Aerosmith, I just like piled on my classes and I did it and I did it. I could never have in a million years taken that many courses. I've excelled in that many, and excelled in the courses and it finished in that short amount of time by any means. So yeah, I finished and I graduated very ex like excited and I thought I was done with school. I remember pivotally like finishing my last exam, writing it and being like, I'm done. I am officially like I am done with the system. I am done with the school. I love learning. I love working hard, but like the school system, educational system is not for me. Like I am, like I'm done. Uh, I got a really cool research position in Belgium and I went to work in a lab in uh, Belgium at a university there and it was an amazing experience. And I spoke at a conference, at, uh, a huge international conference and one of the Canadian professors that was there was like, you should go get your master's. And I remember being and I was in Belgium just after I finished my undergrad. And I was like, nope. I was like, oh, well, I was very endeared that she had suggested that I do this. And she goes, you can yeah. totally do it. What you're researching, you're capable. You're... I was very honored that she had said that. But I was like, thank you. And I remember walking away being like, there's no way. Like, I just finally finished my undergrad. I don't, like, I'm not ready. No. 
And then I was in Belgium and then like worked, traveled a bit, came back. And I was like, hey, time to get a job. And then I was looking at jobs and I was like, well, and the, the master's idea was always in the back of my head. So I was like, well, I went and spoke to the professor about it when I came back to UVic. And she was very encouraging and like, you should do it. And I was like, and I contacted the professor who I'd be working under and there's an open door. So I was like, okay, I, if I want to do my master's, now is the time. I don't have to take a center. Like there was a lot of just open doors that I could literally walk into and do my master's. So I took about like two months or so to really be like, I wanted to be all, like, I didn't want to go back to school, but I think this is a really good opportunity and I am capable of doing it. I think it will be hard. Yes. But like, I can do this and I think it would be really good. So I bit the bullet and I decided to come back for my master's. So literally a year late, I had a full year off of my undergrad. It was like January to like, so 2019, I didn't, I wasn't in school, but I came back in the January 2020. I um, started my master's. That's so, amazing. Yeah, Nev. If you would have told me at any point, any yeah. point in my undergrad degree or at Eaton Aerosmith that I'd be doing my master's, I would have, like, no, you're lying to me. Like, there's there's no way that one I could mentally do it, but two, like, emotionally do it. I would have said that you're crazy. <laughs> Yeah. And look at you now. You look happy and it feels like you're on the right path. Yeah. I mean, I won't lie. Like, it's definitely hard. Like, it's definitely hard. Like, I definitely, like, I'm still, I would say, struggling in some ways. But I think any student, I put it this way. And I felt the same way when I came back to, uh, to my undergrad. I'm still struggling and I'm still having those growing pains as a master's student. But I think any other master's student would have the same growing pains and or like, I'm like, I can do it. I know I can do it. I know I can put myself through it. Like I have a deadline I have within myself that I want to finish part of my thesis by the end of the summer. And I've kind of put it off a little bit. And I've, <laughs> but like, I know, I know I can complete this master's. Will there be stress and anxiety during parts of it? Absolutely. But any master's student will tell you that. Like, yes, I'm happy and I'm proud of myself that I'm doing this, but some days I will question it being like, why did I put myself here? But any, I think any master's student or PhD student will tell you that. So Absolutely. I'm, I'm okay knowing it and I will get through it. It has been really nice talking with you uh, today, Alyssa. I hope that when you're done your master's that we can uh, hook up again and, uh, and talk more about what you're doing and, uh, and a little bit more as you continue uh, I think you said earlier that that you're still continuing to um, uh, to feel the the power of the Aerosmith program. That that not everything kind of happened at once or magically at one point, but it continues as you as you continue to use your 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 strong brain uh, in in new and exciting ways. Oh, absolutely! Like I wouldn't say like we had talked about before that I had any major aha moments my two years in the program like there definitely were some but i have benefited and recognized um a lot of positive effects afterwards and like they kind of keep popping up <laughs> right i i yeah. come to a hard time and i'm like no like oh wow i've dealt with this way differently than i ever have or i have the confidence and i the ability to overcome this situation or whatever obstacle that I, I have faced um definitely seeing more um outcomes and things that i've learned through my two years at Eaton Aerosmith. that is really exciting thanks for sharing that with us and uh we'll talk to you soon thank you for having me